we make no secret on this channel that we love looking at some of the quirky inventions and adaptions that uh, the canal and railway engineers came up with during their era to try and overcome problems. <laughs> when is it going to be when, when are we open? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how long is Piece of Street? and today is one such journey on a canal we've never been on before, the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal. My name is Paul. And I'm Rebecca. And welcome to the canal invention that the canal engineers really didn't like to use. Oh, I've got to get my leg over. Go get your, get your leg over, Rebecca. Come on. Oh, I don't think I can. It's, it's, it's not easy, is it? Yeah, yeah, then you've got to turn around because you can't kind of... Oh no, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. Oh, that was a faff! <laughs> so somebody definitely doesn't want you to get in there. There's a significant barbed wire fence and random elephant sculptures in there too. Have a look at this shot of an OS map. You'll see something extremely rare. Canal under construction. That's exactly what this is. This is part of the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal. Now opened in 1810 and abandoned by 1914. So classic sort of canal story. But this canal, well, it was hugely important in the canal network. Had the railways not come along, then potentially it would have been a significant link because it linked the Kent and Avon Canal up to the Thames. And I think even then it had another branch going from it up to the Thames and Severn. So the network was quite extensive. And we're not going to try and do all of the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal in one big hit. I'm just going to do sections at a time. And today I'm going to show you some really quirky features of this canal from uh, Laycock. We're just going to join it just up here on our way to Pewsham and Pewsham Locks. quite a bit of time, probably more than we would care to admit to find the canal. But eventually we found this first section. Now, as you saw on the map, it said under construction, mm -hmm. which basically in this term means uh, restored or being restored. And there is a section up ahead of us, which is restored. You probably won't find too many boats on there or narrow boats and vessels, unless there's some extremely keen uh, boaters, of course, because I think it's only a short section because we're still in the very swamp-like part here. Although we do now have a good towpath to walk on. We're nearly at a bit now where I'm going to show you one of the first quirky features of the day. How's your lunch, Rebecca? Quite tasty, actually. We, I was just about to get the drone out and it's in restricted airspace. And I thought that's weird because there's no airports around here, nothing like it, there's no military. Turns out Ray Mill House. Ray Mill House is owned by Camilla Parker Bowles. And for those of you who don't know Camilla Parker Bowles is, she's married to the, to the king. current king of England. Because <laughs> um, I appreciate there's a lot of you that don't watch from uh, this country and uh, often criticise my lack of knowledge on kings and queens, so I apologise. Nevertheless, oh, the- no, you, um, you know there's a current king. I know there's a current Say king. Well this is good, thank you. <laughs> So back to today's story, one of the problems that canal builders always had was a lack of water. Always a major problem, reservoirs were built for them, pumping houses, quirky inventions were built just to try and keep the water level in the canal topped up. But what we never really talk about is what you have, what problem you have if you have too much water. And it seems that the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal certainly on many occasions did have that problem. I think one of the solutions to that is literally just up ahead of us. I keep saying that. I'm conscious. That I keep saying. How many times is it just, just up, ahead? up ahead of us? Just up just ahead. A, just up bear ahead. with people because there's a couple <laughs> of really cool things coming up. We're just now looking at what I've been waffling about for quite some time. This we is finally got there. Finally got there. <laughs> this is horseshoe overspill. Sounds really simple. And the reason they hated using these is because well, it meant they had too much water. And so having to use an overspill is a complete disaster for a kennel engineer because it means they're wasting the water in some ways. But nevertheless, they've recently restored this. I say recently, probably a couple of, um, more than a couple of years, I've now stood in the, the channel for it. So basically, if your water gets too high, you don't just want to let it go over the top because you're going to flood the banks, you're going to damage the towpath, you're going to completely mess up the lining of the canal, everything's going to go wrong. So if you built a channel underneath the, uh, the towpath itself into this, 
which is then allows the water to rise up here safely, comes down here and off down there into the River Avon. We might have seen a couple of clips already of the River Avon, but that's where all the water went. <laughs> Scrub everything we just said, because here is the real horseshoe uh, overspill and it's really quite beautiful. Um, and it also shows you the, the level of the canals and water was often very quite far up because if they've had a summer where they haven't been able to use the canal, all of a sudden now within a month, we've got the water at its peak on that weir on that horseshoe overspill. Look at this people, this is a beautiful piece of um, engineering. I'm gonna try facing this way all the time. There's a big pump in the background. Um, but look at this, this is quite some significant structure on how they kept the, um, the canal from overfilling and ruining the towpaths and the banks along its side. The maintenance of water quite high and they've now installed this wonderful little um, sluice so they can maintain the water level up to a certain point. Right so this is where things get a little bit interesting because this is Pewsham Locks just ahead of us and there is a whole bunch of fascinating stuff going on here. Now as you'll note this is me waffling about it all. Right. Now there's a basin here and there's another basin. So the basins worked on the same principle. Um, but then we bumped into Basil. Now Basil was one of the volunteers here, an 85 year old volunteer at that, who really knows his beans. So let's let Basil do the talking instead of me. Yep, so we're at Pewsham Locks. Yeah, yeah, Pewsham Locks. So there are three locks in the, in the flight. Yeah. We're going to have to a pound between each one. Uh, we're just going to start rebuilding the, the other wing wall of the bridge. This is a bridge that goes across here. There's the other wall up there. You just see the footing of it. Uh, we're just extending the end of this now. We used to have a ramp that ran down from where Bob is. Yeah. Ran down there so we could get machinery in and out. But we okay. can now move that down, further down. So the concrete blocks that you've done there, is that basically the foundation of the walling here? You're just going yes, to carry that on right, and yeah. that'll be the side of the, the basin here. That's right, and yep. that runs into the lock, which is the next lock, which is in that yep. okay. part, pile of uh, rubbish. So this one is almost a, a job from scratch. It looks on the face of it. Yes, originally, originally the wall here was a dry stone wall, cotswold stone okay. backed with clay. Yep. Not, no concrete, no nothing, and because it was built in 1790, yeah. so... Yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we, we've put a footing in here, obviously, yeah. and we're building a front wall there. This will be filled with concrete next week, this yep. bit. Yep. Um, up to the level of the top of that block, then we will build the rest of the wall. Like what you've got back there? Back there, yeah. yeah. So that, that's that. That will then die into the wing wall that comes out of the yep, middle Yeah, I can lock. see, yeah. You can see there's the end of it. Yep. But you've used some parts already. We noticed the double bridge um, back towards Laycock. It looks like you, when you've restored that, you've you kept as much as you can. Yes, we do. And well, sort of just all topped. these blocks are reclaimed. Oh wow! So you are going to use these? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So although you're rebuilding, you're still still using the original bricks. We, we can. Yes. Wow. And this is the middle lock, as you can see. It's got trees growing in it. And, yeah. And it's in a very bad state. Right. We've, we have been in there, but it's not safe to go in there now. Is that because of... It's, it's falling to pieces. Deep, thing. mucky water... No, but there's it, not much water in there. It's, it's the fact that the wall on this side yeah. is damaged. It's very badly damaged. Right. And there's a lot of overhang there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and this is all has to be dug out and built up because it's all gone, obviously. So will you have to wall the other side of the basin? No, or is no. that a case of it's, it looks it. quite good? That's, yeah. that's, how it, that's how it was. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of here, you've done the walling already. Yeah. You know, this, this looks relatively complete, other than a few obvious bits and pieces, but... Yeah. So you, down here, we'll have to take out probably about 18 inches of silt right. to get down to the clay. Yeah. Because okay. over the years, it's just washed in. Yeah. Um, and this is where we've built... Because this wall's finished, we built a ramp against it, so we've now got another way in with the yeah. dumpers and yeah. diggers, etc. Yeah. Bottom lock is again. You can see the wing wall which we built there, and the curve of it goes yeah. around into the uh, into the um, what do you call it, sluice chamber. Wonderful. And then, of course, you've got what I've never really seen so close to lock gates before is a dry dock. Yeah, that's that one over there. Uh, that's the brickwork on that is finished. It's all reclaimed bricks again. Yeah. Um, and we're just in the process of putting a roof on it. 
Right. Okay. It will have, but it's an open side. Yeah. It'll just have a roof, no no sides to it. So million dollar question. <laughs> when are they going to be finished? When, when are we open? <laughs> Yeah, how long is a piece of string? Yeah, yeah of course it's, of course it's. <laughs> it's, it's money, of course, and yeah. it's, um, it, it's obviously a very expensive job. Yeah, yeah. We we know we, we rely on uh, donations and yeah. applying for various grants that are available. <clears throat> but that's basically where we get our money from. And it just depends how much we get in and, and how much uh, we have to get done from outs by outside contractors. Yes, of course. I mean, we yeah. do a lot of the work ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but they're obviously. I think that pound there, that lock there, will be an outside contract. Really, right? Yeah, because of the, the because dangers involved. Dangers involved. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the bottom one, we hope that we can we can actually rebuild that ourselves. Okay. Because <coughs> yeah, it looks looks fairly good. The, the far wall is fine. Yes. Yeah. Wall this side, which has been partly rebuilt in any case. Yeah. The the canal itself is broken up into five branches. Okay. So we we are responsible for the piece from Melksham to. Uh, Foxham. Right. Then, okay. Fox, and then there's a branch called Foxham and Lynham, which takes you up over Lynham Bank. Yeah. There are a flight of nine, I don't know, it's nine or seven locks. Oh, Dauncey Way. Yes. Yeah, seven, isn't it? Yeah, and then you go from there through to Swindon. Yeah. And you've got East Vale and West Vale, which takes you up to the. Uh, other so, end. so you've got your teams, basically. You're, you're teams. almost setting teams, and that's how you're going to. That's oh, really wonderful. Up, up, up. I think they've run out of petrol. So from the banks of the very beautiful Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal, the one mile restored section, um, we're going to bid you farewell. It's been an absolute joy. Uh, big thanks to the Wilts and Barks Canal Society, or Trust, I always get that wrong. And the uh, big, volunteers. And the volunteers who, who have spoke to us today. We will certainly be back, have a look at some more quirky projects from along this route. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, click on the old like button and give that a bit of a boop. Um, a boop. You can, you can boop. You booping. I'm booping. You know where I got that from. I right? know where you got that yeah. from. Thanks for watching, people. See you next week.